as geologist Michel Martaler says, we can tell three stories about a mountain. The first story is about rocks, the building blocks of the mountain itself. They come from different horizons and different times. Before becoming actual rocks, they were either sediments deposited on an ocean's floor, lavas from ancient volcanoes, or were made during processes happening deep down in the crust. The second story, which you can see on this geological section, is about tectonic plates colliding with each other. In yellow, this is the Apuli, a small portion of the African plate. In green, a small portion, or more accurately, a shaving of the lost Tethys Ocean. In pink, the European plate boundary. This story tells us about transportation and deformation as shown by tilted sedimentary beds often observed in the mountains. The third story is about mountain topography. It is about the current state of a mountain, about shaping the Earth's morphology. This story is about erosion by water, glaciers, or any other phenomena scrapping the rocks, mobilizing its fragmented parts or altering them. These three stories can be told at the same time. When we observe a mountain, sediments are being deposited somewhere Tectonic plates are moving, generating earthquakes, erosion is changing topographies. By convention, terrains are color-coded on geological maps. These colors are linked to the first story. Tectonic maps are also color-coded. Here, the colors represent immense rock formations which have been displaced and stacked together to form stressed sheets, therefore telling us about the second story. Starting from Sion's airport, let's go and discover some of the most beautiful massifs of the Valles and Alps, part of a very rich geological area. Here, we can easily understand what the second story is all about. Every beds have been tilted to the south, brought up by the Alpine collision. In the Alps, we talk about thrust sheets. They are terrains which have been moved away from their original location where they were created a long time ago. Studying the rocks allows us to recreate previous environments that is the geography of old times. We talk about paleo environments, paleogeography, paleoclimates, so important today in the understanding of past and present climate changes. During the Jurassic period, 160 million years ago, we would have had to fly across an entire ocean from one continent to another to go across Europe. Paleogeography is like an imaginary trip in a world much older than the mountains, a world only revealed by rock's testimony. This panoramic view is about the first story. Here, colors changes correspond to changes in time and in marine environments during the rock's formation happening in the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. Geological times. The Earth is 4.5 billion years old. We have to wait 4 billion years for the Alpine cycle to start. This cycle, also called orogeny, is made of the three stories, the rocks formation one, the collision one, and the erosion one. Rocks older than Trias belong to other mountains formed during much older cycles. Alpine rocks have different ages. Trust sheets are an assembly of rocks of different ages. It is possible to give a relative age to a rock by studying the rock's bed, their subdivisions and the fossil contained in those rocks. Here we can spot the limits in space and time between the old rocks, gneiss in red, from the primary era, and the numerous younger marine carbonate beds, mainly from the Jurassic, in blue and brown yellow.
in the Dandumidi walls, we see again the folded carbonate beds on top of the older magmatic rocks in red. Another method for dating rocks is radiometry, using atoms contained in the rock's minerals which disintegrate over time, like uranium lead or potassium argon dating. This method is perfect for magmatic massifs. For example, we know now that the Mont Blanc granite is 300 million years old. It's important to keep in mind that the shape of the mountains is much younger than the age of their building blocks, the rocks themselves. When looking at a mountain, one of their faces, or a valley, it's really like looking at a geological section. A simple change in colors can attract our attention. Alpine rocks are very diversified, from igneous granite to volcanic or sedimentary like carbonates and sandstones. We mainly talk about metamorphic rocks in the Alps, meaning that from their formation, these rocks have undergone pressure and temperature changes which affect the crystal structure of the minerals themselves, changing therefore their aspect, color and texture. Metamorphism becomes more and more important as we go deeper in the Earth's crust, since pressure and temperature increase with depth. At the Earth's surface, it's very common to be able to observe thanks to erosion, rocks that used to be kilometers deep. We can see here, on the Grand Combin, two sorts of rocks brought up to the surface by erosion. On the left, very old gneiss from Europe formed 500 million years ago. On the right below, sedimentary rocks deposited horizontally 100 million years ago at the bottom of the Tethys Ocean, but tilted today and metamorphosed. Some natural phenomena can be observed at a human life scale, like landslides or glaciers melting, both affecting the Earth's surface. Geological processes happen over much longer periods of time, thousands to millions of years. By observing a mountain over a few kilometers, even a few meters sometimes, we can travel through millions of years at a time. Glaciers, moraines, landslide or sediment at the bottom of a lake are infinitely much younger than the rocks they usually cover. We are now flying over the Dent Blanche thrust sheet, composed by several high-altitude summits of the Valais and Alps, including the Dent Blanche and the Matterhorn. All those rocks have a continental origin, not European, but African this time, as this group of old rocks has been moved over the remains of the Tethys Ocean. Emile Argan was the first to demonstrate over a hundred years ago that continents move from each other, a phenomenon which has fossilized in the mountains. At the bright horn, above Zermatt, we can spot again the oceanic dark green rocks subducting below Matterhorn. Then again, the gneiss from Monroes have a European origin. Today, the Alps show us, over just a few kilometers, what used to be in the past, two distant continents separated by a vast ocean. Paleogeographic locations that used to be next to each other are now on top of each other. The Valais and Alps can be compared to a continent ocean continent sandwich. 
Let's go back briefly again to oceanic rocks. Here we are back in the European continental crust rocks, gorgeously shaped by erosion. We are flying over the Rwanda landslide of about 30 million cubic meters that fell in two events in April and May 1991. Let's go back to the granitic rocks sharing their origin with the rocks from the Mont Blanc Massif. And finally, just before landing, let's dive back down into the Tethys Ocean, as shown by these carbonate beds from the Jurassic and the Cretaceous, rich in fossilized shellfish. Rocks allow us to travel from the seashore to the bottom of the oceans, and even deep down to the Burning Earth's center.